ring, I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, and we welcome you to the famed New York Arena here in Midtown Manhattan for a much-anticipated main event. Ten rounds in a light heavyweight division. Boy, and we expect this to be a big night of action. We spoke with both fighters yesterday. Fireworks anticipated here tonight. Let's see. He's focused is front and center as he makes his way to the ring right now. The assassin's making his way to the ring now and you can see how focused he is on the task at hand. Let's have a good clean fight. Touch him up and let's go. Little get to know you here in the opening round scheduled for 10. the body shot. <laughs> the assassins tagged by that powerful hook. <laughs> Not able to land the uppercut. Good defensive skill. He got all into that one. That was a solid uppercut. <laughs> Halfway through this round here, he missed with that headshot. Protecting his head well with his guard. to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. Very nice defensive guard there. Tried the hook, didn't get it. And you can see he wanted to do that as he holds on there. Scores well to the head with the right hand. He just missed that shot up top. Final 10 seconds of round number one. Oh, he just did a big uppercut right there. He had no idea it was coming his way. He does not look good at all. The end of the round has arrived. He's 
And now an opportunity for the trainer here to get his hands on his guy. His guy just got tagged pretty good there. And when he looks into his eyes, what is he looking for? Well, first of all, he's looking to see whether or not his guy is still there. You know, he got stunned pretty good. And then what he has to do is make sure his guy's listening to him and telling him, hey, look, you got caught. You've been caught before. This is the way we can fix it. This is what you got to do to correct things. Start of a new round. The Assassin's making it look like the start of a fresh fighter. Remember, he was stunned in that last round, but Teddy, he looks fully recovered now. Well, it tells me two things. One, he has good genetics. He recovers fast, you know, physically. But it also tells me he had a good camp. He came here in great shape, and he's getting the benefit Let's of go, that guys, right man. now. Go. That punch just closed. Scores up top with a left. Well-timed, well-placed uppercut there. Able to land the hook to the head. Flush right hand to the body. to improve that accuracy missed with the headshot reaching the halfway mark of this round the last thing either guy wants to be here teddy is one dimensional the last thing you want to be in anything to be successful is one dimensional i mean if you're a comedian you don't want to be saying the same jokes all the time your crowd's not going to be there well your opponent is going to be there all night long if you do the same thing the Assassin's basically giving you the impression that he's a little tentative to throw punches based on what happened earlier when he got hurt. Yeah, he's got to find a way now to not give up the offense that he had earlier. He wants to go into a defensive mode a little bit, but if he gives up that offense, he'll fall too far behind to get to that no-man's land where he'll need a knockout to win, and he doesn't have that kind of power. He scores with the jab there. You know, Joe, a lot of times you think about a jab being used by an outside guy, but to get inside, you need a cover. And there, right there, was the cover. Move! Ten seconds to go in this round. The Assassin's in complete control here as he takes a rest after a round in which he really dominated the action. Is there anything, Teddy, that you see that he should be thinking about when he gets off the stool here for the next round? Yeah, you know, he should follow up on his lead, on his edge, on his advantage. You know, he's, I noticed that he's hurting him in the body. Well, now start to double up that hook. One downstairs, one upstairs. You can get ahead, but you have to keep working. Tienes que trabajar. I need to see some counter punches, okay? Whenever he misses, counter. And round number three is underway. The Assassin's rocked by that punch. Keeping his hands up, getting rid of his opponent's offense. Good block. Solid left hand to the head. Nice work. 
Oh, what a power punch he was able to land there. Joe, that's what you call setting up a trap. Not a mouse trap, but a punch trap. Set back a little bit, invited him in, bang. Able to land another power shot early on here, Teddy. Does he have to worry about trying to keep up this pace? No, I don't think so. If he keeps at this pace, he's not going to be around to worry. You got this one. He took a go of it to the body, but came up empty. <laughs> Halfway through this round. That's a well-scored left hand by the assassin. A well-targeted jab that time. And that's exactly what you need when you want to stay on the outside. Something to keep you away from your opponent. was a miss by the assassin. Uppercut there. Final 10 seconds. See, that's the work they want to see with the right hand by the assassin. Staying away from those headshots with his defense up top. Go out. Get Go out and fight this guy. Take it to this guy. You have to go and set this guy. You gotta watch the water in the corner. When he misses with a punch, down it. You gotta give me the double jab. You're not giving me the double jab. You only give me. The Assassin's ahead on Teddy's scorecard as we take a peek at those scores for the first time here today. Round number four just underway. After three rounds, he finds himself up just a round, but nothing really to pull away early on. Get out of the way. Well, I don't know if he's hip to the idea of becoming a counterpuncher, but I get the sense you'd agree with it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's got the perfect platform, the perfect form for it. The guy's walking in right now, not moving his head much. He can time him, he can counter him. Very accurate with the overhand right. Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. He is not in good shape. Big shot. Targeting that head and landing with a bomb. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Well, that may have been just a flash knockdown there, Teddy. Yeah, I think he's okay. He looks clear headed. His legs are okay. Now it's just a matter of making sure that he understands why he got caught. Up top with the quick hook. <laughs> nice work on the right hand by the assassin. Halfway through round number four. Not able to land the headshot. Able to cover up that gun. The assassin's doing something that not everybody appreciates, but 
he is making his defense a major factor in this fight. Yeah, well, a lot of times people, you know, they only get it done on one end. What I mean about that is, you know, offensively, they use the jab, they use aggression to set up the offense, but he uses defense to set up the offense. He, he has a double-edged sword. Nice work. Nice work. And a smart counterpunch by the assassin. He clinches when he gets to the inside. Good. Ten seconds to go in the fourth. Okay, you're doing good. Very good. Very good. Come on. Pretty deep. You're fighting his game plan. Box intelligently for him. Here you go. Come on. You're more intelligent than he is. Let's go. Let's go. You can do it. Well, he got caught by a lucky punch in that last round. It did do some damage, but now you can tell he's right back where he wants to be, fresh and ready as we start this round. I don't take lightly when a guy gets dropped, but you know what? I think he was more embarrassed than he was hurt. hook over but couldn't turn it into a connect. Parries that punch intended for the head. He's tired. Good body shot. The right hand came home. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Frustrating his opponent with great defense. The assassin's movement helped out there. He avoided that punch. Relax, relax. Really frustrating his opponent now as he's so defensively sound. It doesn't make for an easy target. No, it doesn't. And it makes for a very frustrating night for his opponent. I see his opponent now, if you notice, he's getting a little tentative. He's afraid to let the punches go because when he misses, he's worried he's going to leave an opening. Not much action as he just ties up. Good step back and counter punch there. Beautiful. Not hitting his mark. The assassin's got a little something coming back at him. A counter punch scored. Unable to land that shot. Final 10 seconds of this fifth round. Keeps his hands up defensively, protecting the head. Comes right back with a shot of his own. End of the round is upon us.
And we have a fighter in front of us who just looks gassed. He looks tired. Now, Teddy, what can he do to overcome that when this fight starts back up? Well, first of all, this is where you're searching to those corners that you're not forced to search. Kind of like when you were a kid and your mother told you to clean your room and go into those little nooks and crannies where you never knew there was dirt. Now you got to start looking into nooks and crannies inside yourself. Places you didn't know were there before. You better find them. You better find them quick. Sixth round now underway. Let's see who can really come on here in the second half of this fight. You see him holding on. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. Teddy, I'm starting to wonder, what is the answer for this guy? Can he do anything else than this? Yeah, he throws punches, but he has no accuracy. Can this change in mid-fight? Well, it has to if he wants to win this fight. And how does it change? Well, you know, the problem is these things have to be put in place in the gym. I don't know if you could do it right now, but if you could, you tell him in the corner, hey, tighten up a little bit, you know, shorten up these darn punches. A well-placed left hand up top. Halfway through round six. I like how he doubles up that jab by the assassin. The assassin swinging and missing like he's at bat right there. That punch was nowhere near his opponent. I can imagine throughout your career, you've been all over a lot of fighters for lack of movement. Yeah, it's very, very frustrating because you start to wonder, does he want to win the fight? That's what you start to wonder. Working our way towards the bell, last 10 seconds of the sixth. <laughs> Well, as that round comes to an end, it gives us a moment to kind of reflect on this overall fight. And Teddy, my thoughts are pretty clear cut. This is the kind of fight that just takes on a personality of its own. This is an all-out war. Yeah, this is kind of like watching a guy who's not on a budget. You know, he's spending with both hands. You know, when he goes home, he's going to have no money in his pockets. And when this fight is over, these guys are going to have nothing left in the gas tank, and it's probably not going to a decision. Good action throughout. We'll see if it keeps up in this round of what has been a very even fight. I like that step back right there. Just enough to be out of danger, but still close enough to then lay in the counterpunch. Well, that's what happens when you have that kind of experience. You're calm enough to know that range. 
know where the beginning of the punch and the end of the punch is. He's thrown a lot of punches here. Now his opponent is showing very, very good movement. What adjustments can he make to deal with that movement? Well, Joe, when you're fighting a guy who's smart, who's hard to hit, first of all, you got to shorten those punches up. If they're wide, they have no chance at all. And you got to go to the one place that's not moving. Guess where that is? Downstairs. Move your head. Move your head. At the halfway point of round seven. Dismiss it. We count down the final moments of this round. Trying to go downstairs, but off target. All right, we need to pull ahead here. This fight is too close. I need you to double up the jab and follow with two or three more punches. You need to move your head more, okay? Side to side. Moving, keep your hands moving, and you'll beat him to the punch. We got it. All right. All we need is water up there, and that's it. You don't need that, no. Throw that away. So here we are, Teddy, at the start of round number eight. You got him up slightly, but this reminds me of like a classic distance, like the Kentucky Derby. Can they get the distance? Can they have something left in the stretch run? That's when it's going to decide it. Who can close best? Yeah, and mostly the jockey now, he's not going to hand ride him. He's going to go to that whip because he's not going to take a chance that the other horses aren't going to climb on him, aren't going to game on him. Assassin's proving to be elusive. You see how quickly he pulls the trigger on the hook after that block. <laughs> Not able to connect with the uppercut. Boy, some of the old school guys would really appreciate this, wouldn't they, Teddy? Just great upper body movement, so elusive up top. Yeah, this is an example like they used to say in old days. He stands right in front of you, and you can't hit him in the backside with a handful of bug shot. The halfway point of round number eight.
minutes of the talk. Come on, kid, focus. Listen, I'm not gonna stand here and watch you take those shots, you understand me? Let's go. All right, all right. You are dominating this fight. Keep it up. Keep doing what you're doing. Nice round. That was good. Keep that up and we have this one. You don't need that. No, throw that away. Another round, and if it keeps up with the rest of them, it'll be closely contested and hard to score. Use this jab. Dismisses his opponent's headshot. Gotta try to do better than that. He missed with that hook. up nicely, gets rid of his opponent's body shot. <laughs> the assassin showing that he's got some defense of his own. He got away from that punch. He's showing very good footwork. He's showing fine defensive movement here. But as for the opponent, how do you solve that? Well, you got to make believe you're a football player. You got to make believe you're a linebacker in football. You go down the line with that running back. You don't go following him around the place. You make sure you move laterally. That's exactly what he's got to do. He's got to cut that ring down, take space away. Nice work. Nice work. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. Keep working the ball. Come on, mix it up, mix it up. Keep moving. And he engages in the clinch. Final chance, last 10 seconds of round nine. And that round comes to an end. And you know, I've turned to you many times throughout our careers broadcasting together and said, why is this guy not throwing punches? I just don't get it, Teddy. Well, there's two reasons usually. One is he's not in shape. In his case, I think he's in shape. He doesn't want to throw. I know that boggles your mind, too. What do you mean he doesn't want to throw? You think it to yourself. He's a fighter. He's in the ring. He knows that he has to throw punches. But if he throws punches, he also has to put himself in a position where the guy's going to throw back. That means he has to take more chances. And some guys would rather not take those chances. This is it. Tenth and final round as they face off against each other. Not what he was looking for. That's a miss right there by the assassin. A little give and take, and here comes the left hand. With a hook. 
The assassin showing you a little defensive skill there. I better move away from that punch. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep moving. Good return fire that time. Way through this tenth and final round. Time to bring it home. Final minute of the final round. Get in there! Left, right, left, right, left, right! was not well targeted by the assassin. And they will bring it home in the last 10 seconds of this final round. Final bell of a fight fans fight here, but also the kind of fight that you know there's going to be controversy over the scoring. Yeah, very close. And the kind of fight where you could be influenced different ways depending on what you like in a boxer. You like a guy who's controlling the outside or a guy who goes inside and gets it done downstairs. The verdict is in, so let's send it up to the ring. Listen, we've had enough controversial scoring in this sport to last a lifetime. Not the case tonight. The guy who should have won did win. Yeah, this was one that if they couldn't get this one right, I don't know if they would ever get any of them right. Thanks for being with us, everybody. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Have yourself a great night.